Hello, Act of the Love Church. This is Nate Maring, and we are actually at the park this week, on May 16th. We're having pancakes at the park. So if you're watching this, you probably missed that uh, event at Bewley Park, and uh, sorry that you weren't able to join us, but uh, we're doing a neighborhood outreach, um, putting out flyers and inviting people to come join us for, for pancakes. And we're going to do things like this um, periodically, probably once a month. Uh, so feel free to give us ideas or uh, feel free to come help us out at the next one. We'd love to have you. Just real quickly, a few announcements. The Tabernacle Experience has started May 14th to May 24th. And you need to go to the Trinity Fellowship website. You can just search for that in Google. Search for Trinity Fellowship Church in McGregor, Texas. And right on their first page, their home page, it's going to have a link to a sign-up sheet. And you can sign up for any time slot for in those 10 days, sometime between noon and 7. And I'm told it takes about 45 minutes to go through the experience. Um, and they do ask for a donation to help cover costs. Uh, so be prepared. The recommended donation is $7 a person. Uh, so, but if that is a financial problem for you, um, they say up front, uh, don't let that be the reason you don't come. And so they want to be a blessing, and I'm really looking forward to this because I've never, I've never been to anything like a reproduction of the tabernacle, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it firsthand. We are going to be going as a church on Thursday, this uh, the 20th at 7 p.m. We're going to be meeting there at Trinity uh, around 6:45. So uh, if you'd like to come with us, let let me know because I would need to change our RSVP for that our reservation, but. Um, that should not be a problem. And they're also looking for helpers. Uh, if you want to help them out during the week, there's a separate sign-up uh, to get their helpers organized. Also, uh, June 12th to the 17th, we're going to go on a missions trip to Oklahoma Dream Center, and we're going to be serving the people of inner city Oklahoma City. And uh, we've done this before, several years ago. We know the people, we know the area. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we get to do different types of projects every day. Um, and so, you know, there's no better way to get in line with the servant heart of Jesus than to serve people. And so uh, we hope that you'll uh, ask us more questions about that and start to put that in your calendars and, and um, make that happen. It's about a, less than a month away now, so it's getting close. All right, today we're finishing up Philippians 4, uh, the last book of the last chapter of Philippians. Uh, last week we covered the first half, uh, verses 1 through 9, and uh, there was just so much good stuff in there that we already talked about and so much stuff remaining that we decided to split it up. Plus, next week is, is Pentecost, and what a perfect time to start the book of Acts. We're going to study the book of Acts to learn more about how these house churches are supposed to work and how our Christian walk being led by the Holy Spirit. In fact, Acts means the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what is that supposed to look like in our lives? And so looking forward to that next week. So at this point, I want you to go ahead and read the rest of Philippians 4, starting with verse 10 till the end. And I just want to remind you that uh, Paul is writing from prison in Rome, nearing the end of his life. He realizes he may never get out of this alive. And he is reminding them that they should be joyful and content in their situation. Uh, also, remember that um, this whole book was written in response to the Church of Philippi sending a financial gift with Epaphrodites to Paul in Rome. And so he's just kind of over... Uh, whelmed with, with joy to uh, hear from his, one of his favorite churches and to, um, and to know that they've been praying for him and are supporting him again. And so this book has a lot to do with financial gifts. Um, don't go into a lot of conversation yet, please. Just read over the, the second part of the chapter and then we will come again at the end of the video to go through Promise Principles and Prayer. Unpause when you are ready to continue. Alright, welcome back. Well, we're going to actually just do a little bit of reading, starting with verse 11. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And then this is the million-dollar verse. you got to commit it to memory. Philippians 4.13, 
I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So this verse is uh, well, well known and is sometimes abused because taken out of context, it says I can do all things, all things, like leap over a building in a single bound or fly to the moon without a rocket ship. I don't know. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now, obviously, when taken in context with other verses, it says you have to be in God's will, and then it might be possible. Uh, God certainly, uh, Jesus certainly promises that we will do even greater works than he has done. So it's not that we can't do amazing things, but it is that they has to be in, in God's will. But this verse is not necessarily talking about actions, about accomplishments. This is talking about getting through the situation. Because the, the context here is that he is in prison and he is receiving financial support. And he's saying, look, 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 I've, I've learned to be content with little or with much because I know that Jesus is my uh, mainstay. Jesus is m my provision. And so he's saying, I know that I can do all things that God has called me to through him through Jesus who gives me strength. So I do hope that you'll memorize this verse and take encouragement from it. I remember there was many times when I've been really tired. Uh, I used to do youth ministry where I'd go to churches and I'd sleep on, you know, tile floors and a sleeping bag and, you know, be up late and then get up early and have to, you know, be full of energy to, to play with kids. And there were some times when I was not so, you know, eager to get up and so I would just repeat to myself, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And it's, it's kind of that supernatural jump starter. It's kind of like, well, do you believe this or are you just saying it? Because if you believe it, then you can get up and you can get going again. And so, uh, yeah, I encourage you to take encouragement and strength from this verse. But also remember its original context. It doesn't mean that you can just do random arbitrary miracles. It means that... Uh, you can get through the situation that, that Christ has you in. But if that wasn't enough, um, Paul goes on to say, um, thank you for your gift. And by the way, this gift is a sweet offering, like an incense, uh, pleasing the Lord. You know, we're fortunate that we don't have to give uh, animal sacrifices anymore. But when we give um, financial or or any type of uh, sacrifice of ourself, that is an offering to God, and it pleases God in the same way as the Old Testament um, uh, sacrifices did. And, and Paul is saying, look, you're giving me a blessing, let me turn around and give you a blessing as well. And so he says that, and now may my God meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And so this is another good one to commit to memory, uh, to have peace in the provision of Christ. Uh, just like Matthew 6.33, um, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. Or Romans 8.32 said, He who did not spare his own son, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? And so those are all great verses to say, don't worry people, I've got your back. You're mine, I'm the good father, and I'm going to take care of my children. And then at the end, in his farewells, it's kind of like a shout out from the homies. He's in, in Philippians chapter 1, he says, look, everybody knows why I'm here. Even the palace guards, the praetorium, they all know that I'm here because I'm preaching the gospel. And so he had been working on the household of Caesar, or the, the staff of Caesar. And then in the end, in Philippians 4.22, he says, And all God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. So, amen. Man, Paul, great job, dude. You went into the lion's den. You went into Rome uh, bravely, almost voluntarily, and you just decided you were going to witness to anybody and everybody that would listen. And in Caesar's household, now you have a following of Christians who are, are giving their blessings back to the Philippians because they're appreciating what they're doing for Paul. And that's awesome. Uh, so let us be bold in our faith. Let us never forget that we are 
exactly where God wants us to be and that he is going to equip us and resource us uh, with everything that we need to get through that situation and to do the ministry that Jesus has called us to do. Amen. God bless you. Love you very much.